Is the right answer. Sehr good. Sehr good. Feel good. Leave them where they were. You can piece somebody else for the day, but leave the name cards because then you'll get rotated around the back again. <laughs> All righty. Thank you. All right. We have to make a little U turn and we will head into the city out to Schoenbrunn Palace. Schoenbrunn. Uh, I'm going to sit down here, otherwise, I'm going to fall down and, you know, Thomas and I aren't that close. <laughs> uh, you are, if you are a member of the United Nations, you are under diplomatic status and you have your own license plates, all this sort of thing. Now, did anybody make it to the Copa Cagra? You'll see the tower over to our right hand side. I always think it looks like a rolled up newspaper, right? <laughs> and this is the um, the, I think Tony, what's the name of it? Let's just call it a tower. Um, it's 242, uh, let's see, yeah, 42 feet high. Uh, it cannot be, if it were in the city center, we could not have this tower because it would be taller than the Tower of St. Stephen's. So they, it's the Millennium Tower, that's the name of it, the Millennium Tower. It is over to our right hand side. They do have a rotating restaurant on the top floor. I recommend going up and having a drink and leaving, not having dinner, because dinner's awfully expensive up there. Uh, but uh, the Copacagran is the area of the Danube. St. Peter's, St. Paul's on our left hand side. This is the last in Vienna, the last Catholic church built in Vienna. Uh, it was built by Franz Joseph, uh, the last full emperor, the one that saw stuff clipped to create the secession movement. Now we're going to be coming back down this road when we leave Schönbrunn Palace and we'll get a better view from the other side of the street, but it is an absolutely amazing building from, from um, the, uh, basically a little bit further away. <coughs> and it goes to the Art Nouveau style, the new art style. It's very, very beautiful. Uh, and you will see more examples of this. If you look up to your right-hand side as we drive down the next walk, you'll see many examples of um, the Art Nouveau uh, paintings on the buildings. To our left-hand side is the Nash Mart. Nash Mart, it means in Yiddish, to eat sweets. To eat sweets. The Nash Mart is the cosmopolitan greengrocer, and uh, it, it makes a great place to graze through lunch, and not far from the city center. Uh, it is open from 9 to 5 today, and at the very end of the Nash Mart, this is the painting I talked about in the castle, at the very end of the Nash Mart is the flea market flea oh, yes. market, but now it is actually a real flea market that we know with lots of tchotchkes and dust collectors. <coughs> but it is I a fun should. place to I come should. and have some, some lunch time uh, if you're interested. Now we're coming up to uh, the Schoenbrunn Palace in not too too long. Uh, now this area that we're going to, uh, it started out life as a, uh, a forest with a small mill uh, on a 
little trickle of the Vienna River. In the 1500s, it became a uh, hunting lodge of Emperor Maximilian. It was completely destroyed when the Hungarians came in uh, and it started to be rebuilt by another emperor named Matthew. Now Matthew didn't live for very long. See, I told you, it's a tchotchke market. <laughs> and it's open until 5 o'clock today. Now when emperor, now, once we go through the turnstile, you're going to be with Gabby and she'll take you through. While you are doing that, because I know she's going to take really good care of you, I am going to go and get our tickets for our theater tonight, okay? So there were up to 1,500 to 2,000 people working at the court, and of course they needed enough space here. Well, and you can see that in the main palace, we have three floors, but on the two side wings, between the second and the third floor, you can see smaller windows. They had to add an additional floor, and why they had to do so, I will tell you inside. And I hope I will not forget, as I most of the time do. Well, this is called the Court of Honor. Here, the Emperor and his guests arrive. Staircase in front of the building. Well, when this palace was built around 1700, there was not a staircase but a ramp. So the Emperor could arrive on the center floor, which is called the Piano Nobile, the noble floor with the state rooms, in his, he could arrive in his coach. So he didn't have to walk up onto the second floor as we have to do now, but he could go up in his coach. Later on, the staircase was built here. Well, the palace and the side buildings all together have 1,441 rooms. How many, How many girls do you need We for will that? not visit them all today. <laughs> <laughs> so How many bathrooms? Seat. Oh, bathrooms or bedrooms? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, not so many. <laughs> and uh, But we will visit the state rooms, around 20, originally furnished and designed in Baroque style, which is the style in the early 1700s. I told you that this palace was built around 1700 and it took another 50 years to get the imperial summer residence as it was outside of the city then in the 1700s. The city of Vienna was not that large of course and it took a woman to make it to the summer residence, of course, yes. And she knew about everything about fresh air, gardens, uh, and her name was Maria Theresa. She was the only lady ruler in Austria, and we will hear a lot about Maria Theresa inside the palace. So, let's go inside now. You felt the rain Have a happy end, 
people are lucky coming out of the theatre. The they can sleep well and they can work well the next day. <laughs> so this was one of his reforms. The square itself is uh, one of the most beautiful squares here in Vienna. The facade is unique on the three wings, but the buildings behind have different ages. So behind this part of uh, uh, the facade, this is uh, that uh, she loved to ride, she loved to play cards, she loved to dance, she was a girl. The riding school with the white horses. Vito. With 400 years to go, this cathedral. What we can see now is from 1250, uh, that's the main entrance over there. And 